Hey there everyone, it's episode 48 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best martial arts stories and conversation, like today's episode where we delve into martial arts movies. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but on the show, I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, in case you didn't know, makes the world's best sparring gear and some great apparel and accessories, all of it for traditional martial artists. I'd like to welcome our new listeners and thank all of you returning fans. If you're not familiar with our products, you should check out everything we make, like the Whistlekick Sparring Helmet. It's a comfortable sparring helmet that uses our exclusive materials for a more comfortable yet durable helmet. It's extra reinforced and cut in all the right places so your head can breathe and those of you with long hair can fit into it easily. You can learn more about our sparring helmet and all of our other gear and apparel at whistlekick.com. All of our past show episodes, all the show notes, and a lot more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, why don't you sign up for our newsletter? We offer exclusive content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. But what about today's episode? Martial arts movies are a critical component of martial arts culture. Anyone that has trained in the martial arts for a time knows that there's a large overlap between the people that train and the people that enjoy martial arts films. If you listen to this show before, you know that some of the most passionate martial artists are also huge fans of martial arts films. Perhaps more than any other pursuit, film is woven into our culture. Martial arts school owners in particular know the impact that movies like The Karate Kid and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other films had on encouraging society overall to seek out martial arts instruction. But do you know your martial arts film history? How about the impact these films have had on society? The first martial arts film was made in 1905 in China, entitled The Battle of Ding Junshan. Now, I'm probably butchering that name, so for any of you that actually know Chinese, my apologies. It was based on the novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and it starred Tan Xinpei and was, technically, a recording of an opera performance. But it still counts. Unfortunately, the only print that was still in existence was destroyed by a fire back in 1940. Now, the second oldest martial arts movie may be The Burning of the Red Lotus Temple from 1928. Now, unfortunately, it too failed to survive, but we know a little bit more about this film. The most interesting thing is that it was 27 hours long and released in 19 installments over three years. And some people say there are too many Fast and Furious movies. Now, of course, there have been a tremendous number of films made in the martial arts genre. It wasn't until martial arts' so-called golden era of the 60s and 70s that these films really started to enter the mainstream. On the leading edge of that in America was the 1955 film Bad Day at Black Rock, which featured the character John McCready, played by Spencer Tracy. During the film, McCready uses martial arts, marking this as the first Hollywood film to do so. As many films as we're used to here in the United States, Hong Kong produces significantly more, though production is really past the peak that it was at in the 70s and the 80s. While fight scenes have certainly been a popular element in American movies, I think we can all agree that very few true martial arts movies are made here. When we talk about martial arts films, at least in the United States, Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon inevitably comes up. Made in China, it's easily the most popular of the wuxia style of films. For those of you that might be unfamiliar with the term, like I was before I started putting together the research for this episode, wuxia, which translates as martial hero, is a genre of Chinese fiction that involves martial arts in ancient China. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon fits that bill and is the most acclaimed martial arts film, at least ever in the United States, capturing four Academy Awards the year it was released. The impact of martial arts films on popular culture isn't one way, though. As we look through cinematic history, we see a growing use of martial arts in non-martial arts movies. This leads us to a point in time where some people reference the Blade movies as some of their favorite martial arts films, and Jason Statham is one of their favorite martial arts actors. Now, rather than argue whether they are or they aren't martial arts films or actors, I just want to point out that the line between those two things has become pretty blurry. This isn't the 1970s, and we have far more to choose from for our martial-inspired entertainment than a few Bruce Lee films. Nearly every action film today borrows elements from martial arts, whether it's striking, grappling, or using weapons. And as our participation in martial arts has changed, so have our movies. Great example. 
As the Brazilian art of capoeira started to spread throughout the United States in the late 80s and early 90s, we saw the 1993 film, Only the Strong. Martial arts fight scenes are far more extreme today, often with generous amounts of flipping and creative acrobatic movements. If you compare martial arts competitions today to those from, say, 20 years ago, you can easily see that the trends in these movies are mirroring those trends in martial arts practice. Despite all of this, martial arts films still don't do very well at the box office, at least here in the U.S. Of the top grossing martial arts films, only eight of them have grossed more than $100 million at the box office. For comparison, twice as many buddy comedies have reached that mark, and 83 different animated films have made over $100 million. Of the eight martial arts films over that threshold, three of them are from the Rush Hour franchise, which many people aren't going to even consider martial arts films. The remaining five, in case you're curious, the 2010 version of The Karate Kid, The Last Airbender, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Karate Kid Part 2, and The Last Samurai. While these films did well, there are plenty of other films that have done well at the box office. As movie theaters continue to look for larger grossing, blockbuster movies to make, the martial arts films get pushed to the side. Hollywood isn't content to produce a simple, profitable movie these days. They want to set records and fill seats for weeks or even months. Martial arts films don't do that, at least for now. Hopefully that'll change someday. But that doesn't mean new martial arts movies aren't being produced. As video production becomes easier and cheaper, we're seeing more independent films released. The Martial Arts Kid, an independent film starring the martial arts legends Don the Dragon Wilson and Cynthia Rothrock, was funded on Kickstarter to the tune of nearly $175,000. The film has been produced and was screened in theaters in 2015. A quick perusal of Kickstarter and Indiegogo today show that there are a number of independent films that have been proposed. Some have been funded, some have not. Now, while lists are great for creating controversy and conversation, I'm not going to give you my top however many number list of martial arts movies. And part of that is because that list would change. My favorite martial arts movies actually change pretty dramatically depending on my mood and, if I want to be really honest with everyone, where I'm at in my own personal martial arts training. When I feel confident in my training, I prefer the more elaborate, dramatic films like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or Ip Man. As I watch the movies, I can imagine myself in the scenes with the actors performing the movements. Now, I'm not saying I could do them as well, but, but I can imagine. Now, if I'm maybe feeling a little rusty or haven't been making it to classes or training on my own as much as I want to, my preference is towards something more like The Karate Kid, where you see adversity overcome throughout the film. Now, for the record, yes, I like both the original and the new version of The Karate Kid. So, what's your favorite martial arts film? How about a great example of a traditional film that has a strong martial arts influence? Let us know what you think in the comments for this episode, number 48, at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. While you're over there, check out the show notes with links to everything we talked about today, including links to those old martial arts films I mentioned, and some cool photos from some other martial arts movies. If you want to be a guest on the show, or you know someone that would be a great interview, please fill out the form on the website. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do. If you like the show, please subscribe or download one of the apps so you never miss out in the future. And if we could trouble you to leave us a kind review wherever you download your podcast, we'd really appreciate it. Remember, if we read yours on the air, just contact us, and we'll get your free pack of stuff. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. So, until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.